Are you treating your income like a business? If not, you could be losing thousands of dollars on an annual basis. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And what we're going to be discussing is how to increase your income by 20% today. Let's get into it. Now, the very first thing we should talk about is the fact that your personal finances and how you treat your money, if you can treat it like a business, is exactly where you want to be because your household is a business. Yeah. And the reason why Carmen and I are saying this is because we go back to our experience in corporate America. I know for me, every single Thursday, what we did is we had a budget meeting Absolutely. and we made decisions on how we're going to make improvement in the organization based on our budget. Yeah. And same thing goes for me when I was in corporate America corporate America as well, you have to take in consideration that the business's bottom line is very important. They need to understand the money that's coming in and what's coming out and how they can continue to operate. Mm -hmm. So if you're not doing the same thing at home, you could be, again, like I said, losing thousands of dollars every single year, um, living well above your means and just not having a, a really good system to manage your finances in the first place. Yeah, I 100% agree because I think a lot of times what we what we did is when we got off from work we came home and we just shut down yeah 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 basically that's what that's what we did <laughs> and what we what we started to do is we started to bring on whatever positive or, or good things that we could incorporate into our household from work that's what that's what made us more efficient with our money yeah yeah because really what we did was like you said we shut down we watched reality tv played video games whatever it is <laughs> we weren't doing things to sharpen our tools so uh we need to make sure that we continue to sharpen our own tools when it comes into our household because if we're going to do it for someone else we need to do it for ourselves. Yes, 100% agree, which brings us to the very first point we want to talk about is how are we managing our money or our money management system is very, very important mm -hmm. because looking at our money management system is how we can see the efficiencies and inefficiencies of how we're managing our funds. Mm -hmm. And when we say money management system, whatever you're doing to, to calculate your numbers, to understand what your income is and the costs that are associated with your living expenses. Right. Because before we go out and try to uh, increase our income, we need to understand what, what we're currently doing with the income that we already have and mm -hmm. making sure that we're most efficient with what we currently have. Because mm -hmm. if we increase it, we're just going to have those same problems with more money than we did right now. Guilty. Yeah. You literally, you make more money and now your, your cost of living becomes even more expensive mm -hmm. when you don't even know why, because you know, uh, we have those bad habits. Yeah. So what we want to do uh, again, to make sure that we're all on the same page is right now, understand your numbers, understand the business of your household. How much does it cost you to live? What is your income like? And look at the numbers, compare mm -hmm. and contrast and see if you're where you need to be. Yeah. So uh, before you start looking for more money or taking on a, another job, understand what's happening in your household. Because a lot of times we find uh, our clients, they're just not in tune with what's going on. And they feel like they need to go increase their income when really it's like, wait, do you understand your, your spending habits? And do, do you see where your money is going? Sometimes it's just about really honing in on the habits that you've created for yourself and making sure that you have discipline and, and that you're cleaning those things up. Yeah. One thing that we see a lot is what people do is they put like additional funds on multiple debts. Yes. Good so they, they pay more than what the minimum payment is on multiple debts. Yeah. And what that does is by splitting up your money, it makes your dollars a lot weaker mm -hmm. by putting those dollars together and having one goal in mind at a time. Mm -hmm. That's how you maximize the power of your dollar. Yeah. Now let's put this into perspective. So Darius said, like, let's say we put an extra 50 bucks on every bill that we have. What if we took that those $50 and, and held it and maybe put that into something that's going to create cash flow for us mm -hmm. or, or hold it for savings? Because if something happens, you know, we have that money available instead of having to swipe our credit card to pay for whatever the emergency was. Mm -hmm. So just think about that for a moment. And this isn't something that you have to do indefinitely. Maybe it's a strategic play where you do it a few months to get a little bit of cash in your hands and then you go back to, to uh, maybe a more efficient play of maybe just knocking off one debt instead of sp splitting it all over the place. Yeah. But we just want to get you to think about these things because 
have you been taught this? Do you even know that you can do this? We didn't know this information. And so that's why we want to share it with you because we want you to be as efficient as possible. And a lot of times people, you know, are patting themselves on their back and going, Oh, I'm doing really great because I'm paying over my minimum payments. And we're like, wait a second, you just given Wells Fargo money just to be given money when you're the one who needs the money in the first place. Let's, let's have that conversation. There you go. Now, the second point we want to make is after you've take a, taken a look at your money management system, the second thing you want to focus on is prioritizing cash flow because cash flow is just the money going in and out of your household. Yeah. And with one thing we do with our cash flow is we have an assignment for every single dollar that we have mm-hmm. to make sure that we're most efficient. So we manage our money down to the penny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for us, just an example, we manage our funds based on the 50, 30, 20 rule which means that every single dollar that comes into our household, 20% of it is going to go towards savings. Yes. And then 30% is going to be our flexible expenses, which is where we can find our debts. Mm -hmm. And then half or 50% is going to be towards our fixed expenses, expenses that are not going to change that we have to pay every single month. Yeah. The difference between fixed and flexible is fixed expenses. The 50% of our income is going towards the, our shelter, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, it's going towards food. It's going to the things that we must have in order to survive. And then the flexible is everything else. Yeah, absolutely. Now, by focusing, what what we notice is that with some people, their flexible expenses is the highest uh, mm. bill that they have. Mm-hmm. Where their flexible expenses, they're spending more money on their flexible expenses than their fixed expenses, mm-hmm. and the savings is nowhere to be found. Yeah, needs versus wants. Yeah, really, that's what it is. That the needs outweigh, or excuse me, the, the, the wants, wants outweigh out, the needs. Outweigh the needs. Yeah. And if you want to be efficient with your money, you cannot continue doing that. No, you can. You can just can't. Mm-mm. And to be clear, you, you, the whole premise of this video is talking about um, getting more money, you know, obtaining 20% more money. And really what we want you to understand from this video is that we're just teaching you to look within, <laughs> look at what's going on because we could be freeing up some cash that we desperately need to achieve our financial goals. Mm-hmm. So look at your income times that by 20%. What is that number? Go find that in your income right now and mm-hmm. go figure out, you know, where can you rearrange some of the finances or where can you rearrange some of the expenses that you're paying so that you can utilize this money to as a come up (laughs) to to do something better um so i just want to make sure that we hone in on that point now once you found out those expenses and figured out that 20 percent that's going to help you achieve those financial goals let us help you rearrange those goals so click on the link below to join the wealth nation so that we can help you create more cash flow for your family And comment below, let us know how you found more money within your income. Mm -hmm. Now, the third point, the first two points, what we did is we looked inside of what we're already doing to make sure we're most efficient. Because Mm -hmm. when we start bringing in additional funds from the outside, what are we going to do with it? Is whatever habits that we already have is what we're going to continue doing. Yeah. The roots create the fruits. The roots create the fruits. So you got to make sure your root system, (laughs) what you're doing right now is legit so that you can produce the fruits. There you go. Now, the third thing that we focus on, or I think everyone should focus on is your circle, your proximity to power or the things that you want to accomplish. What people are you surrounding yourself with that are assets to you? Versus the people that are liabilities to you. Mm -hmm. You know, assets, what assets do is push you forward. Those are the group of people that you want surrounding you. Those are the people that will help you achieve goals that you didn't even know are goals for you. Mm -hmm. Liabilities are people that slow you down and say, you know what, instead of you focusing on that uh, money management stuff, why not let's go out and let's hang out. Let's hang out. Let's, Let's go out this Friday and have some drinks. None of that is putting any money in your pocket. None of that is making you a better human being. Mm-mm. So what you do is focus on surrounding yourself with people who have similar goals to you or, or people who are managing this whole life thing just on a, a different level mm-hmm. than you are. Now, don't get me wrong. We, we like going out on Friday nights and, and, and having a nice cocktail. Yeah, we, <laughs> but, we did. <laughs> we did. But the, the thing is, what, what Darius is saying is don't heed to distractions. Mm-hmm. You know, we all know that there's a few people in our circle that are currently distracting us. Maybe you just got a text message from them <laughs> and they're <laughs> distracting you from your overall goals. You knew, you know, you should be doing something better, but this person keeps dragging you down. That's what we're talking about is, is taking, uh, 
taking inventory of your circle, mm -hmm. making sure that you are surrounding yourselves with go-getters, people who are pushing you towards those financial goals or those business goals or those personal goals and helping you achieve those things or, or are, are holding you accountable because that's really the game-changing factor for us, we find, when it comes to our finances is surrounding ourselves by A players who are also trying to do some of the things that we're doing. And if anything, I would say we're, we're at this point surrounding ourselves with people who their goals make us uncomfortable because we're like, how can we get there? But they're there. We know we can get there. So they push us to be better every single day. Yeah. And one thing we did when we first moved to Arizona, Carmen was still working in corporate America and I was focused on growing our business and we didn't know anyone in the area. Yeah. So what we did is we focused on uh, networking opportunities where we went to different events that focus on entrepreneurship and growing businesses. Yeah. And what we did is we found people there that were into the same things that we were into. They were focused on business. They were focused on getting out of corporate America. These are the people that we started surrounding ourselves with and we pushed each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because think when you hang out, if you go on a barbecue or you do go out for, for drinks with these individuals and you're talking about business and, and mingling, and, you know, and they're saying, oh, well, you know, I accomplished this goal or, you know, I got some more money here or I had my first deal. And you're sitting there going, oh, well, I didn't really do much this week. <laughs> you know, you, you don't want to have that kind of conversation. You want to make sure that you're always coming to the table with something. So finding a, uh, a friend, a, a community that you can plug into is really, really important. And that's what's going to help you stay on that path towards achieving your financial freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the fourth point that we want to make is uh, before let's let's do a recap of everything that we discussed. Sure. Because the, the first thing we talked about was managing your money, managing mm -hmm. your money and, and treating it like a business. Yes. Because you, you go off and you make money somehow and wherever you make money from, they're focused on the bottom line. So we should be doing the exact same thing in our household. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and let, let's put that in. Let's bring some context to the table. Right. So let's say if you make ten thousand dollars a month, you know, that the business that you are creating around your situation, your circle is sitting down and saying, OK, if I made ten grand this month, what are the expenses and going line by line by line and figuring out, you know, what do you have available? Mm -hmm. And you better not be going over ten thousand dollars because that's your bottom line. Where are you going to get that money from. So it's all about making sure it's Play-Doh, right? Your, your, your income right now is Play-Doh. You're molding it and, and fixing it to make sure that it's doing what you need it to do. Right. And the, accounting for every dollar. Absolutely. Now, the second point is after you've accounted for every dollar, what are you doing with that, that money to generate cash flow? And cash flow is the money going in and out of your household yes. or your business. Yes. The third thing that we talked about is make sure that you have a group of uh, friends around you mm -hmm. who help you stay on course, yes. who help you become a better version of what you what you are, what you want to be. Mm -hmm. Now, some people may say, Carmen and Darius, that, that's not really important to me. I don't necessarily need a circle. But at, at the end of the day, who are you going? We're social creatures. Humans are social creatures. You always need some sort of community or some sort of companionship. So you want to make sure that you are aligning in some sort of companionship that is making you a better person, that is helping you achieve those goals. Mm -hmm. Because it's really going to be, I'd say, make or break because you want to make sure at the end of the day that you're always striving for more yeah we're trying to travel down the course of least resistance yes and the, yes. the easier it is the easiest thing to do is to focus on things that you're going to naturally be doing that's why we talk about habits that's why we talk about um, understanding uh, you know what we're currently doing with our money so that we can just make small tweaks to make things better for ourselves mm -hmm. because when we get to the last point which is basically prioritizing your gross income Everything that we've done prior to that, that's what's going to make the difference of us maintaining the 20% additional funds. Yeah. Because we can go on and look at our account today and say, okay, I'm not being efficient with um, overspending on all these uh, flexible expenses, these debts. I'm overpaying on it. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is make my minimum payment and take that additional income and pay myself first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can you can do that is by taking a look at your inventory, taking a look at your money management system. Mm -hmm. Because as your income increases, what it's going to do is it's going to expand on the habits that you already have. Yeah. So if you're not efficient with your cash flow, you're not going to be efficient with just 
making more money. No. Yeah. And so Darius brought up gross, gross income. So gross income versus net income. Gross income is the income that you're bringing in. Mm -hmm. The total. net, the, yeah, total. The net income is your gross, the income minus expenses. So again, using that analogy that I was talking about, if you make 10,000 a month, that's going to be the gross and then minus expenses is the net. Mm -hmm. So understanding those numbers is going to be very, very important for your, for your, your goal setting. And let me tell you why I, I said gross income It's because we're so efficient with our cash flow that we can not have a profit or a net income and still be successful because every single dollar is being accounted for. That doesn't leave any room for a profit because 20 percent of our income is going towards savings. 30 percent is going towards our fixed expenses. And the reason why that's important is because when you using your whole life insurance policy or doing this uh, concept of lifestyle banking, what you're doing is you're focused on transitioning your debts that's leaving your household <laughs> to debts that you own, which means that you're paying money to a company that you own or to a, a bank account that you own. Mm -hmm. So now that 30 percent of income is now becoming more efficient. You're now generating more cash flow. Yes. So as your income increases, you can still do exactly the stuff that you wanted to do in the first place. It's because you're more efficient with your money. Mm -hmm. You're able to make better decisions when you have the money to do so. <laughs> Man, you can say that again. Now, uh, to, to now put context to that, um, we're going to link this video here where we actually talk about how we paid off our debt with our whole life insurance policy. So that'll help you see how we are now owning our own debt and not paying it out to the financial institutions. Because now that that money was being spent away from us, it's now coming back every single month, which is now allowing us to have more cash flow to do some things that we want to do that is going to allow us to generate passive income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the that's the flow in which it should work. Look at the, what we're doing on the inside. And then once we establish what's important to us inside of our household, then we can focus on things out, outside of our household, which is the gross income. Exactly. So what I want you all to do, ladies and gentlemen, is you have homework. Go figure out your gross income versus your net income and go figure out what is that 20% that you need to bring back into your household. It, are you overspending in a particular category or do you legitimately need to increase your income? And if you need to do so, then click on our next video where we can teach you how to create passive income. And download our freebie below where we talk about 52 different ways where you can generate passive income using whole life insurance. And don't forget to own your own lifestyle or someone else will.